Okay, so I want to take a minute and talk about Baby L and his departure. So Baby S is right inside sleeping on the sofa and my room is a mess so I figured I would just come outside and it's also beautiful in SoCal and make this video. I want to start this off by saying these are the realities of the foster care system. Everyone talks about the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids, the kids. And that's, we should be, we should, they should be our first priority. I mean, that's why we're doing this, right? But what I think what happens also is that not enough people are addressing what the foster parents, the foster families, the other children in the families, if there's, you know, biological children in the families, what they go through. It is a emotional roller coaster of a journey. Look at that pride flag flying high. Um, so baby L, I got a call. Um, I'd say a week and a half ago. The video I put out yesterday is actually about a week old. Um, the video, the my the phone call for baby l came in on a wednesday afternoon now i had told my agency i would bring another baby in if that child was if it was looking more like that child would go to adoption and the reason i said that was because I didn't feel that I had it in me to deal with the back and forth of DCFS and the court system and all the appeals and everything that comes along with the foster care experience. So if I brought a second child in, I needed it to be something that worked for myself and for baby S to where I could um, effectively parent him and the new child. I was told by my agency that this child is, has multiple, I'm gonna try and be as anonymous in my descriptions as possible. Multiple siblings in placements in foster care and none of the other foster families want to bring baby L into their home. I was also told that the mother was not on track, not looking like she's going to be getting her act together. And it seems that because of the amount of years, um, reunification probably was not gonna be happening. So I said, well, I didn't say right off the bat. I said, I need, I need to call someone. I called my mom, I called my aunt, two aunts. I talked to a friend at church and I prayed for about 40 minutes because as I've shared, you have to make these decisions very quickly. I called my agency back and I said, let's do it. They said, okay, great. He's still available. A couple hours go by, that agency worker calls me, says, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm calling about baby L. And um, you know, we're excited that you're gonna take him in. I then asked the social worker all my questions. I basically reiterated everything that I was told about him in his case and his situation. I also asked what are the likelihoods of him going all the way to adoption. Um, and I, you know, I asked all these questions about about mother, about father, about family. I was told that. You know, there doesn't seem to be any family that would pop up out of nowhere because, you know, the mother has been in the county system for so long and no other family has popped up out of nowhere. So after many years, so they just didn't expect it to happen. <sighs> I asked my questions for about 20 minutes on a phone call with that second worker, right? And then I said, okay, let's do this. The next day, 
they bring him to my home. That's what yesterday's video was showing when they brought him over and the days following. Baby L's mother reached out to me two times a day, every day, via text or phone call. Great, she should be calling me. If I was in that situation, I would be calling the foster parent probably more than twice a day. I don't blame her for it. He was placed with me on a Thursday. By the next Wednesday, I had a phone call with the mother. We got to talking. Something just said, why don't you just talk to her a little bit longer? And she had always, I always, it, it required me to like probe in our conversations. Like she would ask one question and get silent. And it was very awkward throughout the conversations with her all week. But that conversation, I felt I needed to just like probe a little bit more. So I asked her more, I asked her about her other kids and things like that. We talked about visitations and that would happen. And she says, oh, I actually already have custody back of my other two boys. I was like, what? Really? That's great, you know? Meanwhile, in my head, I'm like, that was never conveyed to me. And she goes on and says, yeah, I'm doing overnight visits with my other two kids, not the two, those two, like two more of her kids. I was like, wait a minute, what? I had no idea. Now, again, great. I'm glad she's getting her life in order and these things are happening. So I'm thinking to myself, first off, great. Like, this is great. If she's getting her act together and they're reunifying, fantastic. That is a wonderful thing. However, that's not the conversation that I had with my agency or DCFS. And I got upset. Because I can do the craziness of the system and the appeals and the, all the other, all those things with one child. But two children as a single person while working in real estate in Los Angeles is, is a lot. It's a lot. That's why when I found out all these things were happening, I could put two and two together and be like, oh, well, he's not highly adoptable or he's not, you know, on track to be adopted. He's gonna get reunified. This woman's doing great. If someone is having overnight visits with their child, that's because they're doing great. Again, I will say again, that's fantastic. But that's, I, if I knew those things when the call came in, I would have 100% said no. I would have said, this is not the child to place in my home because it's too much for me. I'll be a, of a disservice to the child and the one that I currently have. So I reached out to my agent, my agent, I reached out to my agency and I said, what the heck is going on? Come to find out, they didn't know. And I believe them. I believe that they did not know. I talked to the county social worker she said to me, oh, she just said stuff. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. Part of me doesn't believe it. Part of me wants to believe it. What I did tell her is there is no reason I should not have been told there were overnight visits. Because you knew how I felt about um, if he was on track to be adopted or not. And if he wasn't, I knew that I couldn't have brought him in. I knew that it would, two cases that were, you know, up in the air was not what I was looking for. I think that information was purposely held from me. So I had a very difficult decision to make. It just so happened that that Wednesday that I had that conversation with the mother, the next day was the first placement or a de detainment hearing. So seven days after the city detains a child, they're required to have a hearing where they present the facts as to why they took a child from a family. And then a judge says, yes, we are taking this child into our custody and, or no, bring that child back. <laughs> that was on Thursday. 
exactly a week after he brought he was into my he was in my home. He ended up the courts the courts ended up saying that DCFS was required to return baby L to his mother. Now what that does is it shows me that DCFS did have enough information that when I told them I want to do this if he's on track to be adopted, they probably should have said, we should look for another foster family. There are people that want to strictly foster and there are people that want to foster and want to adopt if the child becomes adoptable. I am the second person. So that is why I'm putting this video out today. This is a very difficult process for people to go through. This is, these are the realities of the system. Again, I don't know where exactly where the miscommunication was, but I was very clear on what I was looking for. So, that's what happened with baby L. About two or three days after I actually saw baby L, I had gotten his Medi-Cal card in the mail because every child that enters the system automatically gets enrolled in Medi-Cal. Um, and I texted the, the mother and said, hey, by the way, I have his card here. Would you like to come pick it up? We met down the street. I gave her the card. Baby L was sleeping, you know. I wish he had one of those things around his head in the car seat that kept his head stable. He didn't. I don't know what else I could, like, what can I do? What can I do? Say, give him to me? No, I can't do that. What I witnessed was, what I witnessed with baby L was a system that is failing a child. So, it's back to baby S and I. I'm not going to bring in another child. Um, I'm only going to do one placement at a time. I would love to adopt baby S. If I'm unfortunately not able to do that, then I will bring another placement in. So that's what happened. So I wanted to put out that video um, yesterday because, I w because, because all of that did happen and that was exciting. and. It was a journey, it was a process. And I thought to myself, it's important that I put this video out because people need to see the realities of the foster care system from the parents as well. So that's it, peace out, I love you all.